it's recording go sweet all right okay folks you are watching wrestle extra and of course it is the month of february which means it is black history month in the u.s so as you know on black wrestling Alliance page we also we go all out for black history month this year it's a little bit different we have legends with us so i'm not just typing about them and showing you pictures we actually have them with us and i am so excited so privileged um to have one of the most decorated tag team wrestlers ever um and someone who i think is kind of you know overlooked many times when it comes to the legends and icons of black wrestling <laughs> it is the one and only d1 dudley wow um sir how are you doing I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm doing really good. I got to kind of agree with you there, overlooked um, in that aspect. It's almost like, not that they forget that I'm black, but I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if teaming with Bubba because he's white. Maybe they think I'm a white guy. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I used to get Whoa. mad when WWE didn't put me on any of the Black History Month stuff. I was like, God damn. I was like, is Bubba really holding me back even from my parent people? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I mean, they, they want to put me on Black History Month. I mean, what the hell? Do they, do they think I'm white? I mean, do they really believe the story that him and I are really brothers? And, brothers. You know, and I just had a little bit of a tan or something? I, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, let, let's, let's get straight into that um, because I want to talk about you know, what it was um, like for you as a black person in the wrestling game, um, predominantly white scene, all that stuff. And of course, you teamed with Bubba Ray. Um, what was it like? Did you ever see yourself treated any different to Bubba um, or, you know, whether that be negative or positive? Because that can happen as well. Well, like, I will. Like? Yeah, I will. I will say this and I'll go on record and saying this is that, you know, as a black man in this business, I couldn't get away with nearly half this stuff that I see some of my white friends who are in this mm. business get away with. If I was to even remotely say anything out of out of content like some of them do, forget about it. I'd be gone. Mm. My, my black ass would probably be yanked out of the uh, Hall of Fame. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely believe that. There's no question in my mind. Mm. There, has, there has been times where I've said the littlest things and gotten reprimanded for it, but yet somebody else close to me can say something that's totally outrageous and mm -hmm. they'll just get don't say that again and that's it or not even get that mm. so in you in know? that aspect did you kind of feel like you were like walking on eggshells a bit you know with what you had to say or maybe holding I, your truth off back a bit there was a lot of times where i would i was felt like i was walking on eggshells to a certain degree and what i mean by that is just simply because again you know, I had to be careful what I said and, and I didn't want to piss the wrong person off, you know, mm. because there was definitely, hi, there was definitely my, I'm sorry, my daughter just came up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> hi, Talia. <laughs> <laughs> but there were times where I actually, um, um, you know, there were people that I knew that were racist in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, that smiled in my face and stabbed me in the back and said mm -hmm. things about me that I knew. And then I would always either confront them or say something. There's people out there, there's people today mm -hmm. that are in this business that, that I definitely will say that are card carrying members and traded their white sheets in for suits. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. I definitely did. There's, there's no question. So for anybody to say racism is not in um, wrestling, they're full of crap. Mm. because it's alive and well, just like it is walking the streets of America every day. It's mm -hmm. alive and well. Like I said, some of them traded their white suit, their, their white sheets and for suits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was it like having to work with those people, like in the ring, knowing full well that, you know, they didn't like you? And well, it was, never, it was like never the talent. It was never the talent. Okay. It was always somebody behind the scenes that I had the uh -huh. issues with. And, you know, listen, I'm going to say this. Vince is a very fair man in terms of that. And I know he gets a lot of slack mm -hmm. because of how he, you know, perceives black wrestlers and things like that. But I will say, anytime that I ever known that there was an issue with racism within the company, 
he would definitely put his foot down and say something. Now, mm -hmm. again, some people will disagree with me. Some people won't. But every incident that I've ever heard of that he's found out about, he's definitely reprimanded and taken action um, mm -hmm. against it. So, you know, um, the incidents that I had, basically, I basically just kept it to myself. I never said anything and never wanted to say anything. There was one particular person who I knew that was very close to Vince, realized that there was an, that I had an issue with somebody. Uh, and I just never, I told him, I said, don't worry about it. It's all good. Don't worry about it. And he said, no, he goes, I got to say something. I said, no, you don't. I said, leave it alone. I said, God will handle it. And I was a very, per I was even back then I was a God fearing man. And mm -hmm. I believe vengeance is his. And so I decided to let it happen. And sure enough, it did. Mm. It did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how, how did that, um, background, you know, coming from, um, you know, your mother was a, is a preacher. Um, you come in that. How did that help you get through some of those difficult um, incidents with whether it be racism or just in wrestling well, in general? Yeah, reverting back to my childhood and how I was brought up in terms of in the church. Mm -hmm. And when you have an issue, uh, you rely on God. You rely mm -hmm. on your on your Maker. Um, and there's an old saying in the church, at least I know in the black church, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And mm -hmm. you just got to be able to let go and let God. And I firmly believe mm -hmm. that it's not on our time. It's on his time. He mm -hmm. knows when he's supposed to get the revenge for you. You just got to be patient. But so many of us as individuals, we get so mad and so wrapped up into being angry at an individual or something mm -hmm. that someone did that we want to see vengeance now as opposed to when he sorts out to see that vengeance. And I'm very, very in belief that, you know, in, in all my years that I've been um, angry at someone or something or what mm -hmm. have you, and I gave it to God, and I did listen to my, you know, to what was being said, let go and let God and, you know, and let his vengeance take, you know, control over the situation, it happened. But the minute I try to put it in my hands, it's never happened. Mm, 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 mm. it's never happened it's never happened the way i wanted it to work out and i've been around this business for 30 years so i've seen a lot of things and i've had experiments you know where i've said mm. okay god i'm gonna let go and let you do what you want me to do you know i'm gonna be humble and stay whatever to this individual until you see otherwise and he's done it he's done it for me every single time so that's why i'm a god-fearing man that's why i'm a very spiritual man and that's why exactly I went and just got recently got ordained as a reverend. Amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats, That's amazing. Real Reverend Devon. Wow. Real <laughs> Reverend Devon now. Wow. It ain't, it ain't just amazing. a gimmick. It's real. Real. It's wow. Real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> just have to real. get um just have to get um Batista is his lay minister now and he can be Deacon Batista again. <laughs> I think Dave is okay spreading the word through Hollywood. <laughs> I don't think he wants to come back and hold the collection plate. <laughs> because if I can remember, Dave did not get any of that money. <laughs> I remember Batista used to look at me and say, damn, Rev, what you going to do with all that money? I said, well, I'm going to put it towards the church. He said, Rev. <laughs> um growing up i mean doing that whole that whole gimmick and you know even in ecw um when you came through as, as the dudley boys and stuff and very much so um that whole preacher persona um the you know the characteristics and stuff like that what was that like was that your idea was that someone else's idea um how how did that come about well, it was Vince's. Well, here's it. Let me let me just go back to this. It was originally an ECW. My character came from Rocky Three, Mr. T, uh -huh. and Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction. Yes. So, with that being said, and I always like to say Mike Tyson too, because in the very beginning, when I had hair, that's why I used to. <laughs> that's why I had the part going all the way down from the top to the back. Right, of my head right, right. Yeah. And that was out of that was out of respect for Tyson. Because I was a, to this day, I'm still a huge mark for Mike Tyson. I've seen so many of his fights that when I'm on the cardio machine, I put it on and it makes the time go by fast. Yeah. I've seen the same fights over and over again, but I look at it as if I'm seeing it for the first time. Wow. And it just makes, it makes all of the, the, the tiredness and all of that going on in my cardio <laughs> disappear. <laughs> you know, so 
it's yeah, great. Yeah. But yeah, but I um, it originally came from that in the Samuel L. Jackson, of course, when he would, you know, as my brother's keeper and he would, you know, recite the Bible before he killed mm-hmm. someone. That was what Paulie wanted me to do before I beat somebody's ass. He went, that's where the thou shall not steal and all yeah, of that yeah. came in. And so with that being said, it had always been a part of me. And at, and at one point, you know, Bubba and I, when we got to TNA, um, he did a lot of the talking because mm-hmm. I was trying to get the Mr. T character over. And what I, what I mean by that is, if you remember in Rocky Three, Mr. T didn't do talking. There was one scene where the press came in his locker room and they tried to talk to him right before the first fight. And he says, I don't do my talk. I do my talking in the ring. Mm-hmm. I don't talk to you guys a bunch of parasites and leeches. <laughs> and I remember looking at, like I've seen Rocky, when I tell you over a hundred times, it's over a hundred times. One day I was traveling on the bus. We were overseas mm. in the UK, actually. <laughs> Go figure. I, hey, guys. I, uh, I, for I, TNA. And I had my portable DVD play. And I always brought Rocky III with me. And I, and I, again, mm. I watched it over and over again. And that particular part stood out to me. And I said, you know something? This character was such a badass that when Mr. T walked on the camera, you knew something was about to go down. And that was the persona that I wanted to pursue in TNA. And so when Bubba said, hey, you want to talk? I'm like, no, I'll do my talking in the ring. And I tried to do the same thing from the movie as if we were mm-hmm. doing it in wrestling. So that's what that's how that came about. And so um, now moving back to WWE, um, I basically, Vince came up with the idea of separating us at that time. Me and Bubba mm-hmm. thought it was absolutely the wrong idea. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think so when I look back at it now because you know, Reverend Devon was successful. As much as many people and Bubba like to tease me, no, it wasn't. We don't talk about that. I'm like, bullshit, excuse my French. <laughs> we do talk about it because I'm sorry. You want to put Reverend Devon up to Bubba Ray Dudley mm-hmm. in singles in WWE. I went over, you know, I had matches with Rikishi, I had matches with John Cena, Randy mm-hmm. Orton, and Triple H, and I beat them all. Mm-hmm. I beat them all. And, and for Hunter, you know, here's the thing for Hunter to lay down for me during that time. And this is when Hunter was like really reaching the peak of his career. Reign of terror. And, right. And for when sure. when here it is, he wanted to work with me and put mm-hmm. me over on SmackDown. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, I remember, you know, just not understanding when that gimmick went south. I couldn't understand because we were doing promos with Vince. We were hitting yeah. him on target. Yeah, I was yeah. doing promos by myself, hitting him on target. We was getting heat. You know, I was, like I said, I was dancing with Cena and Randy Orton just about all the time. Mark Henry, um, mm-hmm. Farouk at the time, yep. uh, Val Venus. I mean, you know, and like I said, I was, I was doing it all and, and, and actually really getting over. And out of nowhere, it just stopped. It just stopped. And I couldn't place mm-hmm. it for the life of me of why this was happening. And I, and I, and I found out later on why, but I don't say anything about it. It's all good. I get it. It's it's the business the way it is. But Mm -hmm. back then, I didn't think I was strong enough to say anything. Because again, Mm -hmm. this is what we talked about in the very beginning, the fear. You know, I had to watch my tongue. I couldn't really come out and and, out and be angry. Couldn't be the angry black man. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't do that. And um, I was scared, you know, that I would lose my job if I said anything, speaking up for myself. But then it got to the point where I think towards the end of it, uh, right when they told me that they were going to bring me and Bubba back together, and we were going to do it at that Survivor Series in 2002, I think it was. Um, I remember being angry because I remember, you know, again, the, the, the Reverend Devon went south. Then they put Farouk with me and we were hitting it good. We were hitting it real good. And then um, I remember the new SmackDown titles were being you know, in a tournament. This is when they first booked because they separated the branches Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. SmackDown was starting to get now their own belts and Mm -hmm. uh, the tag team titles. And then we we were in that tournament. Me and and Ron were doing so good. When I tell you he was my shoot manager, he was my shoot manager. Mm -hmm. He really was. Ron guided me and all of that. Even during the Reverend Devon and all of that, he was calming me down, keeping me calm, telling me, you know, things, what to do and what to say and certain things. And Especially when I was in the ring with him, you know, Ron yeah, really yeah. took care of me. And um, 
you know, I remember he was even, his head was like, you know, I don't understand, Rev. He goes, I don't understand why they won't give you the ball and just let you go with it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was pissed. You know, I was upset. Mm-hmm. And I just remember saying something um, to one of the WWE officials back then. And I was like, this is wrong. I was like, I was doing good. Mm-hmm. Why is this being taken away from me? I don't get it. What did I do wrong? I mean, if you, if you tell me what I did wrong, I can understand that. But you're not telling me anything. Mm, 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 mm. And again, I had kids to take care of. I didn't know how to manage without WWE. You know, right. in other words, right. okay, you go from ECW, you're making good money. And then all of a sudden you leave ECW and you go to the big giant himself. And now you're there for five and a half years. And you got to understand being gone for five and a half years and the WWE, you're behind them now. In other words, they're steering everything for you. You know, the interviews, you know, your paycheck, you know, Mm -hmm. um, the shows and just all of that. So now the fear of leaving the giant, it's like, oh, my God, what would I do without him? But we were forced in that predicament in 2005 when they decided not to renew our contracts and let it go out. And it was called Black Friday, I think it was. Go figure. You fired a bunch of people, so everybody calls it Black Friday. So... (laughs) So, um, yeah, so I just remember being depressed and upset. And there were times where now, even today, I look back and go, what would have happened if I would have stood up for myself and I would have said something during the time of negotiating the contract that they Mm -hmm. wanted us to do? What if I would have said, okay, you know, and just went on my own and tried it? I would have never known. But me and Bubba went to Japan, went Mm -hmm. to New Japan, all Japan, Mm -hmm. hustle. We conquered it. There was no way we could live up to the reputation of the legendary great, the Road Warriors, the greatest tag team in the history of this business, as far as I'm concerned. There was no way we could be in the same category with those guys if we didn't go to Japan. So I felt that that was one thing that we were able to conquer and we delivered to the fans and to ourselves to show that we could be in the same category as the Road Warriors. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, again, I, I was dumbfounded of why the whole Reverend D- Devon just stopped. But at the same token, I realized what we did. We went to Japan and conquered. Like I said, we went to TNA and helped mm-hmm. get their tag team division up and Very running. True. So Very there true. was a lot of things that really, you know, came out of that, which mm-hmm. showed me, and I'm not saying anything wrong about the WWE, is that if you put your wheels on or, or your thinking cap on or whatever you want to call it, you can do it. Mm-hmm. It's only a matter of time. And, but, but, but Vince, you see, Vince teaches you. He teaches you the right way of doing things, the right way of doing business with your mm-hmm. contracts and stuff like that. Plus, you know, and when I say he teaches you, in other words, you know, you sometimes you get to do your own contracts. And if you don't do your own contract, you can have a lawyer do it. But you as the individual need to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And every single time, you know, I knew what was going on. So it helped me to learn. So when I was dealing with these shady indie promoters, <laughs> that wanted to give me whatever and not give me what I was just due, I knew it was like, no, 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 no. I know my value. No, no, no. You're mm-hmm. not giving me just that. No way. So I knew mm-hmm. how to handle myself in that aspect. In terms of how to do autograph signings and things like that, the WWE shows you form a line. Don't have everybody bum rush you. Form a mm-hmm. line. Get the money first and then have them come in. It was certain things like that where I see some guys do autograph signings and it's like out of control. You know, there's fans mm-hmm. everywhere. Nobody knows who's taking the money. I'm like that. I shouldn't be able to say nothing. It should be one long line, and yep. you know, one person lets one go. You sign it. You have your interaction. Boom, money was already paid, and blah blah blah. That's mm-hmm. how it should be. Not five different people coming at once, all at one time. And you know, it's stuff like that that we a lot of people take for granted. And don't realize the proper way of doing business. Mm-hmm. Vince mm-hmm. taught us that. So if you take what he's taught you, when it's time to go and go on on your own, then you will be successful. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got to be able to speak up for yourself, but then you can't be too greedy either. You got to know, you got to know your value, number one. And number two, you have to know how to handle yourself and conduct yourself business-wise. There's going to be things that people are going to say to you that's going to piss you off and upset, but you can't go yelling and screaming and cursing and carry on. You have mm-hmm. to be good. You have to, mm-hmm. you have to learn how to, to conduct business in a proper manner. Of course. Of like course. I said, I don't want nobody sitting up there, oh, Devon's an angry black man. <laughs> No, you know, an angry militant black man. No, I'm not angry. I'm only angry when you try to mess with me or my kids. That's mm-hmm. when I'm angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, no, I'm not an angry black man. No, not at all. 
do I denounce racism in any way, shape or form? Absolutely. Whether it's white or black, I don't like it. You know, my wife is, is, is white and, you know, I don't sit there and make white jokes or anything like that. So I don't think people should be making black jokes. I'm sorry. And what I mean by that, if you're Eddie Murphy, if you're, you know, a comedian like that and you're on stage and doing it, that's one thing. But, you know, to be in the locker room and doing all that, number one, you don't get paid to be a comedian. You get paid to wrestle. So don't start telling black jokes on me. I don't I don't play that. I'm not the one. Don't do that. Mm -mm. No, because Reverend Devon won't be so reverent anymore. <laughs> and I was always told it's, it's, it's good to ask for forgiveness. So I'll beat your ass and then ask for forgiveness. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Um, you you talked about uh, Ron Simmons and how he was, you know, like you, your shoot manager, a real friend, a real mentor to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during Father your time, as a wrestler, yeah, nice. During your time as a wrestler, and even beforehand, who were the people that you either looked up to or were able to have that real, you know, uh, relationship with um, as as you were wrestling? Well, like I like to say, first and foremost, my 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 Lord and Savior, you know, because mm -hmm. without him, you know, I would not be where I am today. That's one. And mm -hmm. number two, my father who raised me, who was a, who was a reverend. He was a bishop when he passed away in 2003. Wow. So and my mother took over the church after he died because she's a reverend as well. So this is embedded. This is like it's in me. You know, it's embedded in me. So, you know, um, I looked up to them, you know, um, you know, I had so many relatives, uncles and stuff like that to look up to. But within the business wise, I'm definitely going to say Farouk. I mean, the first black heavyweight champion, listen, and an all dominant white Southern belt wrestling company, NWA. Right. OK, and we all know some of the horror stories. I'm not, I don't have to point anybody out, but we know the racism that was down there and the people that, you know, would slip up every once in a while. And you got a lot of black um wrestlers and talent from those days that actually come out now on YouTube and tell it all, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't have to bring out no names. We already know who they are. But the bottom line is, you know, as a black man in, 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 in that company to be the first black heavyweight champion, that was huge. And the thing about it is I didn't really watch the NWA back then. You know, I didn't watch it at all back then. I was strictly WWE because I was in New York. So, right. Right. you know, right. it, I was basically, you know, WWF. Mm -hmm. And so he was one. Junkyard Dog was another one. I mean, you know, just everything about Junkyard Dog. I mean, if you really think about it, watching him as I was growing up, how he would get the fans to come into the ring and dance with him and, and, you know, and, and do the things he did and have the, you know, charisma that he had. That was incredible. You know, mm -hmm. dog, dog was, uh, was huge back then, you know, especially mm -hmm. during, I think it was, was it the mid South somewhere? Was it Crockett? It was, I'm sorry. I can't remember. It was when he did the, the angle, I think with, um, was it the free birds where he got blind? He was blind in one eye. He got hit or something like that. I forget what it was. And it was like one of the biggest draws ever for the company and wow. it was sold out. They were all talking about Junkyard Dog coming back and if he was going to come back and make it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they raised, they did so much money on Dog, you know? And, you know, so I wanted to be like Junkyard Dog and, you know, believe it or not, Coco Beware was another one, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? I mean, no, he was a mid card guy. Yes, but Coco yeah. could go. He could, yeah. he was a high flyer. He knew how to wrestle. You know, he just wasn't one of those guys that, you know, you, you bumped the head on the freaking turnbuckle and they shook it like you couldn't hurt black people's heads. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not true. You can hurt our heads. Trust me. <laughs> it ain't that, it ain't that hard, <laughs> you know, but it was, there was, you know, stuff, you know, people like that. And, you know, again, um, you know, just really watching them and, and growing up as a black kid living in Brooklyn, New York, and the projects growing up. My mother was pregnant at 15, had me at 16. So, you know, my grandmother was the one that raised me pretty much. And my, my father, who I call my father, he was my stepfather that came in the picture. My biological father really wasn't around. So my mm. stepfather came in and filled that void and, and showed me the church and this and that. So, you know, I'm very thankful in that aspect. Um, you know, so those were pretty much my people I looked up to, you know. So I've got to ask. You said you, so. Your stepfather was the reverend. Yes. And obviously, you were brought up in the church. How do you 
become a wrestler from there? Like, what is that conversation when you want to become a wrestler <laughs> with your parents from those backgrounds and that, you know, that well, those settings? I will say this. My mother was horrified. <laughs> and my, my stepfather, he was like, all right. You know, he was always good because I had a four-year scholarship to Florida A&M to play football. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that killer instinct in football. And I was scared I was going to get hurt, you know, because if you know anything about American football, you know, I played defensive tackle. So <clears throat> I'm the one going in there after the quarterback, of course. So if I go in there after that quarterback and I don't see that pulling guard coming around the corner to swipe, take out my leg, I can get hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Hulk Hogan and body slam. I ain't thinking about that pulling guard coming around the corner. <laughs> and I remember one time in my senior year, I got hit real hard, no damage, but I got hit and knocked off, knocked on my ass. And that was when that was an eye opening for me. I was like, you know, I'm sitting up here thinking about Saturday night's main event when I should be thinking about how to get that damn ball, you know, <laughs> over the goal line or stop the opposite team from coming in. And I'm not. And I didn't, I didn't have that killing instinct in me. And I knew going to a college level, there were going to be people better than me. Mm. So I was just like, nah, I was like, this ain't for me. I was like, wrestling is my choice, and that's what I'm going to do. Mm. Cool. And they supported you? They, like, helped you go to wrestling school? Or whatever? Like, <laughs> like I said, my father was good with it. He was like, you know, go do your thing. My mother cursed me, boy. I was literally the black <laughs> sheep of the family. Good God. I got five brothers. I mean, every time she walked past me, she, mm. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting on his ass, ain't doing shit. And I'll be like, and I'm sitting there eating. And I'm like this. I'm like, Ma, did you just say that? You're a reverend. You can't say that. The hell I can't say that. <laughs> and she let me know, too. She's like, I'm from the projects, remember. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, remember that. Remember that when we're in service. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, but she was, she was furious. Like, she didn't support it at all. And then when I finally made it to WWE, you know, like, she ECW, my last year, I was making great money. I was actually making six figures in mm -hmm. ECW. Uh, my last six months being there. Um, I think I made like 100000 there. Um, and to me, that was big, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't have any bills, no debt. So you give a black kid that, wow. you know, don't have nothing like that, 100000 Wow. Man, listen, I was on top of the world. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, she didn't recognize ECW. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't WWF. It was uh -huh. only... Um, until I got to WWF is when, you know, people started in the church going, oh, my God, I saw your son on TV. Oh, he looks so good. And this and that. So, you know, when the church, my father is done preaching, he, mm -hmm. he passed the collection plate around. Oof, that's where I got that from. So he passed the collection <laughs> plate around. He did his final thing in the church and he opened up the doors of the church so everybody could start leaving. And of mm -hmm. course, my mother, myself and my brothers were in the back of the church greeting the members as they leave. Mm -hmm. So somebody went to my mother and goes, is this the one that's a wrestler? And my mother, oh, yes. I'm just so happy and so proud of him. <laughs> He's so good. I mean, you know, I supported him the whole time. He was, I was supporting him. And I mean, we just been around him the whole time. And I went like this. I just went. And she goes, baby, what's wrong? She goes, what's wrong, baby? I said, because, you know, lightning can even strike indoors. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ma, you're lying. You know you're lying. <laughs> and that, of course, I get, don't you talk to your mother like that, boy. <laughs> um, yes, ma'am. That's the one thing about black women, though, and, and black families and moms. You don't listen. You don't call your mother a liar. You don't curse in front of them or nothing. Yeah. You know, white kids can get away with that bullshit. We get killed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you stole my room. Oh, geez, mom, God, God, why you tell me to that? Let me do something like that. <laughs> Let me walk out that dinner table talking about, geez, mom, pa, God, this is not awesome. This is terrible. Oh, wow. You'll definitely know about it if you did that. <laughs> my, mother, my mother actually thought she was Mike Tyson. Let me tell you that right now, okay? That right hand, you didn't know when it was coming. And when she did it, she always said, in the name of Jesus, bam, I slapped the hell out of you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I told, I, I was speaking to my mother the other day. I said, you know, half of the beatings you gave me, you know, you could be locked up for today. You know, I mean, I'm just saying. She goes, mm, you still here, ain't you? Uh, yeah, well, you got a point there. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of family, um, obviously, we now see that your um, twin sons are wrestling as TNT. Um, Terrence and Terrell, and we've seen them on AEW Dark. 
we I also know that your another one of your sons is training with you as well at your um, yeah. at your wrestling school. Yeah, it's um, my wrestling training. How, how how important has that been to kind of was it always your dream to bring up your sons or was it kind of just it just happened? Like no, that? it was it was like every every wrestler's nightmare for their kids to follow in their footsteps. If you ask a lot of us who have kids that have that want to break into the business, we were like, why? No, don't do that. No, this is a horrible choice you're making. <laughs> but, um, you know, and the reason why is because, again, again, I had to deal with some of the racism. And again, racism is still alive and well. I don't care what nobody says. All right. Mm-hmm. Don't give me that bullshit. It's still alive and well. Again, mm-hmm. a lot of them are hiding now because one let, let, a, let one Karen get upset and, and, and act like a Karen and let a guy, I like to call the guys Peter. So Peter, let a Peter and Karen happen. <laughs> And I guarantee you, and it gets on social media, their asses is gone. So now they got to be careful, you know. And now that Trump ain't in office no more, you know, now they're really scared. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's like uh, you got to be, how do I say this? It's like you got to be careful, mm-hmm. you know. They got to they be careful, That's, you know, because it's still, it's still out there. Don't let it fool you. It's still out there. And I, I never wanted that for my boys. Mm-hmm. You know, I never wanted them to experience it, but then they're gonna they're gonna experience that anyway in life, whatever job they choose. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you know, wrestling. Um, and as far as that goes, I didn't want them to deal with the pain and the agony that I had to feel sometimes. You know, I broke listen, I, I tore my Achilles heel, a torn pec muscle, I had uh stitches in the back of my head from New Jack. <laughs> to wow. this day, every time I see New Jack, every time I see New Jack, I just go like this. I go, "Why, man? Why? <laughs> Why?" <laughs> and he just he just looks at me, goes, "Devon, you stupid." <laughs> 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 oh, I love that brother to death. I tell you, I love New Jack. We've had our wars and we've said things in social media, but him and I, you know, we made up, hugged it out, and you know, whenever I see them, I call him my brother. And, you know, there's no way, you know, look, there's some things that I regret um, growing up in this business. And that's letting that feud between me and New Jack go public like that, because I should have never let that happen. I should have stopped it where it was, because all it is is two brothers going at each other for no apparent reason. While the, while the other people are just sitting there watching and, and putting in the dirt sheets and all of that bullshit. Meanwhile, two brothers angry at each other for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. You know, and letting all that crap go on. So I, there's certain things I wish in this business I could have changed, but you know, it is what it is. But going back to the topic, in terms of my boys, no, I didn't want them to get into it because I didn't want them to feel any of the pain that I felt growing mm-hmm. up in this business or dealing with half of the crap that I dealt with. Um, so when they told me, I was like, no, no, I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. I was like, no, because TNT they have corporate jobs, you know, so. When they, they've always had corporate jobs. So when they told me they were getting the wrestling business, I said, why would you do something stupid like that? I was like, she, they were like, well, you did it. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, I worked in the post office. I didn't have corporate jobs like you did. But you were working for the government. That's a good job. You're right. It is. But I didn't want to work for the man. And he goes, mm-hmm. but you're still working for the man. I said, yeah, you're right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you right. <laughs> I was just watching. I was just watching. I don't know if you guys remember the old show in Living Color. Yep. Yeah, and they yeah. had a show about the man. They had a character, the man, on there. Like Damon Wayne, Wayne used to always talk about the man. The man, yeah. And, uh, so I brought that up to my my boys, and that's when he was like, "Well, wait a minute, you work for the man." And I was like, "Yeah, I do." See, you can't, you can't avoid the man. You gotta you gotta stick with the man. You can't avoid the man. <laughs> Is there anything uh, that you kind of um, advise your your boys now that they're out in that world, as well as you know you've got your your students part of the Devon Academy, mm-hmm. in terms of um, racial and maybe just general advice within the business? Anything you kind of advise them to, to well, be careful of? And- yep, I'm gonna. I, I do tell my my guys this, and my sons. I'm like, stay off of social media. Stop mm-hmm. putting your business in social media. If something goes wrong, don't go looking for sympathy trying to get as many likes as you can or many comments in your favor. I was like, come on, man, grow up. You know, don't do that. I tell my students that all the time because I catch some of them, you know, going online. Well, you know, I didn't get picked for this. And I didn't get picked for that. What am I going to do? So you acting like a little bitch? I was like, that's what you're doing. I was like, don't do that. Don't do that at all. I was like, you know, find out why you didn't do it. Try to make it better. Listen, in this business, and I always say this, as a black man, you got to work 10 times as hard. 
and some of my colleagues won't like what I have to say, but I, and I get that. That's okay. But walk in my shoes and understand what I'm saying. Mm. You know, before you can ask me, tell me that I'm wrong in what I'm saying. I'm not being racial. I'm just telling the truth. We got to work 10 times harder in this business to make it. And that's just like in life, period, you know, because there's always going to be somebody trying to stop us because of the color of our skin. And that's always, that's a fact. So I try to tell them, I said, don't let that bother you. I said, you got to keep going and stay strong. I tell them my story and how I grew up in this business and what I had to do, you know, to make it. I was like, it wasn't easy for me. I said, you know, but I, I did what I had to do. I kept my mouth shut, my eyes and ears open. And I didn't disrespect. And see, that's a lot of things, you know, a lot of, and I tell them, I tell them all the time. I said, listen, don't get comfortable. Mm. That's the biggest thing. Don't get comfortable just because you're making the company money. And just because the boss likes you, do not sit there and think that you can't be replaced because you will be. I mean, if you think about it, you know, in talking to some of the greats, and I don't want to name any names, but in talking to some of the greats, you know, uh, they've always they have told me, they said, listen, Vince fired me more than one time. And I'm mm. looking at them going, damn it, you put people in seats and help this business. <laughs> I'm like, if they fight, they if he was willing to fire you, what are they gonna do to my black ass? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 nope, I'm good, I'm good. I'm gonna, you know, keep my eyes and ears open, mm -hmm. keep my mouth shut, and just learn my craft the best you, I possibly can. And that's what I tell them: learn your craft. Don't be so quick to go out there. Go to a reputable school that mm -hmm. you know that someone has been somewhere. Not someone that claims they have been somewhere and never did it. How are they going to tell you how to uh, get in this business and get ahead when they've never been? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's one of the things that I always tell my students and my boys. You know, you're going to have to work 10 times harder. Put your nose to the grind and go. Mm -mm -mm. Um, you know, we, we, we see that there is this difference between you know a younger generation and the older generation we talk you know we've talked about social media talked about learning the business and and, and respect recently obviously we've had um the undertaker saying certain things about the younger guys now and back then we were tougher people um we've seen excerpts from yourself saying how you know there are some some of these young guys are, are rude like how how different is it for you um when it comes to the general younger guys now to when you were one of the younger guys in your time? Well, in my time, a lot of the younger guys didn't bitch and complain about not going over or what have you. A mm -hmm. lot of them did complain as they got older and bigger in the business, but that's, that's gonna happen. But back mm -hmm. then, you know, our trainers used to beat us up and stretch us. Listen, I can't begin to tell you how many times Johnny Rods who trained me, you know, would stretch me and stretch anybody else, you know, in that school that didn't respect or learn respect. So that was the one thing you have to put in perspective that our generation nowadays could not put up with half of the stuff that's going on back, like what's going on now, like they wouldn't put up with that stuff back then. And they would mm -hmm. literally beat them up. I mean, that's the way it was. And take us right. We don't have tough guys like, listen, you take half of the locker room that we have now and both AW or WWE, Put them in ECW, they couldn't take that brutality that we did every night with the barbed wire bats and the tables and the chairs. Try taking a chair shot from Balls Mahoney every single night for four nights straight at the range and power that he would swing those chairs. People would be bitching and complaining about it. They wouldn't be able to take it, you know? And we did, though. You know, we were strong. We, I don't know how, but we were. We were strong. We did it. We made it, you know? But this new generation, you couldn't do that to them now. People miss. People tell me all the time, I miss ECW. I wish ECW can come back. Well, a lot of us are too old to do that style again, and you don't have you don't have the newer generation that's brave enough to be able to get in the ring and take that abuse. That was the one thing about ECW. When we swung a chair, we swung a chair. There was no holding back, and we didn't have the props like WWE did back in the day, where we can pre-cut and all of that. We had to really break it with our bodies. Right. You know, right, right. there was no fake barbed wire. You know, on the bats, that was real barbed wire that Axel Rodden was swinging and hitting. And I was just, I was just watching something on my Instagram. Somebody mm -hmm. tagged me in something where Axel came down with the barbed wire bat. We were beating up, I think, Balls Mahoney and Spike. He comes down with the bat, the ECW arena. He whips me off and um, to the ropes. I come off. He takes that bat and swings the hips right in the gut. Boom! Then picks me back up, takes the barbed wire and rips it across my head. 
you know? And so my thing was, you know, you couldn't get these guys to do that nowadays. You mm -hmm. tap them on, you tap them and they bitch and cry and complain, you know? So the, a lot of them can't. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some tough people in the business, the mm -hmm. younger generation. There's some tough people, but a lot of them, I hate to say it, they're, they're, they're weak. Mm -mm -mm. And but, what, what, what do you think is, is the difference? Though? What, what do you think is, you know, from your time to, to now, what's, what's changed? Well, I think society in general. I mean, look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays you can't say anything. I'll give you a prime example. I was pissed off at the dirt sheets because I had said I had some health issues that took me off of my podcast, uh, mm -hmm. Table Talk. And, um, and then they found out that I wasn't, I wasn't at the shows with WWE. And they're like, oh, Devon's taking some time off. And it's not. Now, some, some left it at that. But then there was others that were putting me in the grave. And I was like, wait mm -hmm. a minute. And I was pissed off at that. And then one of the things that they did also was I, they, one of the podcasts um, asked me about Stephanie McMahon. And I mm -hmm. said, yeah. And I put it over. I said, she's cunning. She's sweet as pie. She's beautiful inside and out. I was mm -hmm. putting her over. And then, mm -hmm. I, but I made, but I made the, the the wrong choice of word. Instead of saying, instead of saying admired her, I said infatuated with her. So now, Devon Dudley is infatuated with Stephanie McMahon, and I was just like, "Are you freaking serious right now?" I was like, "Are you serious? I'm not infatuated. I love my wife, man. I love my family at home. Right, I'm not right, infatuated right. with another man's wife, especially my boss's daughter." Mm. I was like, "I'm not doing that. No, no." And so I went on my podcast and I started complaining about that. I'm like, guys, get it straight. Now I looked in the camera. And I just went to my friend, to my co, to my co host, and all that. I said, but if I said I was gay and I was going to be on a RuPaul show, which I probably am one day, I said, you won't. You, you're right about that in a negative way. You won't write about that in a positive way. Of course, way. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they freaking ran. Oh, Devon's gay. He's going to be on RuPaul Drag Queen show. And I'm like, are you serious right now? Now you got some people in the lesbian and gay community that were all pissed off. How dare you use it as a platform? I said, I wasn't using nothing as a platform. I said, all I said was, they're going to write what they want to write and, mm -hmm. and misconstrue what they want to misconstrue and how they say right. it. I said, so here's, a, here's this topic for you. I'm gay and I'm, I'm going to be on a RuPaul Drag Queen show. Mm -hmm. And of course, they went crazy. So then I think it was the next week we had Darren Young <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. the show. And um, Darren was just like, Devon, he was like, forget those people, man. He was like, I know you, and I'm gay, and I'm, you know, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and, and then so we, 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 as we were about to bring him on the air, you know, he hears me venting about it. So we finally bring him on. He goes, Devon, Devon, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I said, thanks, Darren. He goes, yeah, don't worry about it. He goes, um, listen, everybody, it's 2020. Everybody knows you and I are in a relationship. It's good. <laughs> I said, well, the dirt she's going to write about that. Me and Darren in a relationship. I was like, okay. I was like, well, I, I can accept that, Darren. I said, well, shit. I mean, you a brother. You nice and big. I said, I can accept that. I was like, but who's playing the part of Bubba? You and me. You and Gail. Who's playing the part of Bubba? <laughs> and he just started laughing. But we got no responses from the dirt sheets on that one. So. Right, 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 right. Um, to kind of come towards an end of, of our interview, um, we're talking about the younger guys. Is there anyone that you see within, you know, within black wrestling um, that you see as like either the star now, future star, someone who's, you know, who should be possibly even bigger than they are now? Like who stands out for you? Right well, now? I definitely say right now, um, Shelton Benjamin has always stood out to me. Mm. I think right now mm. and I'm happy mm. that he's getting the opportunity uh, to be able to go uh, with the Hurt mm -hmm. Business and do what they're doing. I'm, I'm a big mm. fan of the Hurt Business. I love that. And yeah, not yeah. just because they're black, too. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For real, for real. Um, and um, another one, Ricochet is another star. You know, mm -hmm. if used right, he'll be he'll be phenomenal. Sure. Um, uh, and Apollo Cruz, I love Apollo. I think Apollo's great. I think he's definitely. I think he needs that little thing. You know, one of the things when Bubba and I separated, went our separate ways, mm -hmm. um, and they kept me on as a producer. You know, I told them, I said, listen, I said, there's a lot more left of me in the tank. I said, why don't you do this? Why don't you put me and Apollo together? I said, let mm -hmm. me help him out the way Farouk wow. helped me out. Wow, and I wow, was wow. told, I was told no. Mm. I was told no. I, there was so many things. Like I said, I said, put me with Apollo. I said, here's the deal. I was like, when the match starts, I'll have him beat the hell out of him. Then when it's time to get the heat, tag me mm -hmm. in, get the heat on me. And mm -hmm. then I'll make the hot tag to him. 
and then he blows the comeback. He gets up. Right. I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I said, shit, I'm Devon. I don't have to do anything. I'm good. And um, they said, no, no. I said, but I can help this kid. I was like, let me mm -hmm. help him. They were like, no, no. So I was like, all right, fine. And then one of the other things I said was Jeff Hardy was hurt, you, and, but he was still wrestling. But you could tell he was hurt. And this is when I was doing live events for WWE. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember uh, going, hmm. Because they were, they were wrestling, I think, um, the league. Uh, oh, the League of Nations. Yeah, yeah the League of Nations. And it was, a, you know, it was like three men. So I was like, hmm. I was like, okay, so why don't you do that? I said, why don't you put, it's never been done before. You got two Hardys and you got a Dudley in the same company. Mm -hmm. I can help Jeff by alleviating some of the pressure. I was like, so here's what I do. Why don't you put me on, I don't want to be on TV. I said, just put me on a live event so I can help Jeff to rest his body. I mm -hmm. said, so, you know, um, you know, get, let Jeff, come, let Matt start the match. Freaking tag Jeff in. Jeff comes in, does a little thing where he doesn't have to hurt himself. Mm -hmm. Boom, tag me in there. Let them get the heat on me. Mm -hmm. Let them get the heat on me. And then when the time is right, hot tag to Matt. Let Matt blow the comeback. Jeff right. does what he does, and boom. It saves Jeff. It saves everybody. And the fans get to see a Dudley and the Hardys working together, which they've never seen mm -hmm. before. And right. I, was told, I was told no. Wow, wow, wow. I was told that I was going into business for myself if I suggested to say that. So what, like, wow. so what do you think is different? What do you think is different between what um, MVPs more or less been able to do as a producer to what you know to 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 your time? What do you think is different there? Well, MVP still wanted to go, you know, in the ring, and at at this point, and so by the time MVP came back to the company and became a producer, um, I didn't want to go anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. At that point, I was done. You know, I had gave ideas and stuff that can help younger people out and this and that. Because, again, you know, you can't even deny when Bradshaw was teamed up with Farouk, Farouk helped him, yep. you know, and got yeah, him. Yeah, and yeah. Bradshaw, Bradshaw says it to this day. You know, oh, you got to think about it. And WWE, he, he was doing the um, Stan Hansen gimmick. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it wasn't getting over, but not as popular as the, a, as the APA, mm -hmm. you know. And so that really set him up. So I was thinking about in terms of that. Helping um, um, crews to get over and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's, again, if I'm not doing any offense and every, I'm getting beat up all the time, making a hot tag to him, it looks like he's the savior. Right. You right, know, right, so right. that's going to get him over. Yeah. And mm -hmm. again, for you to tell me no, I mean, like, I don't, I didn't know what else to do. So I just said, F mm -hmm. it. I was like, I don't want to even bother him no more. I'm not even going to ask mm -hmm. anything, you know, because I don't want people to think that I'm putting myself over and mm -hmm. trying to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were a couple other people too. God, I can't remember who else I wanted to help out. But again, I thought that that's what we did. Once you mm -hmm. retired or you were somewhat retired, the mm -hmm. veterans would come back and help you because they did it for us. Yeah. You know, they Got did you. it for me and Bubba. So I thought it was just good to return the favor. Right, right, right. And so I think MVP came in at the right time when that was like, okay, they were, they were more accepting to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but they weren't accepting to me. So I was like, all right, fine, that's okay. I was like, I'll just produce the show. I'll mm -hmm. take a bump. Just, I'm still getting paid by the company. I'm still doing what I got to do. So, and I'm, I, I, I'll never say anything bad about WWE. I mean, I know a lot of people do, but you know, I'm happy, you know, with my position and what I do. I don't like the stress that comes along with it, but mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Um, you know, I don't have any ill feelings towards anybody within the company. Uh, you know, Vans. I don't have any ill feelings towards that. I, I'm actually, I have the, I actually have a good relationship with Vans. Um, you know, but again, I know what boundaries to cross and I know what not to, I know my place as an employee and that mm -hmm. he's my boss. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit there and try to be, you know, buddy, buddy with him. I'm going to respect him as he's my boss and that's it. Right. right I'm not right. trying to go on his private plane. I'm not trying to go hang out and go to dinner or mm -hmm. have a couple of drinks. I'm, 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 I'm a coworker. I'm listen, you're my boss. Um, I work for your company and I need to know my place, know my role. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Devon. I mean, this has been really good. I appreciate the time you've given us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Before we get out of here, I have got to ask. Obviously, you've got long term ties with WWE, Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. and all of that. Your boys are over. You know, cutting their teeth in AEW. Is there a Wednesday night war going on within the family? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, no. I, you know, and my thing is, a lot of people ask me why they go to WW, why they go to uh, AW and not WWE, and I just felt that they could grow a little bit and find their own identity. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to coming to WWE and being on my on my name. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they need to go out there like Dustin did when he left his father in right. WCW right. and went to WWE and created Gold Dust. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's got to be able to do. They got to be able to do that. And I even told him that. I told him that the other day. I said, "Listen, you're on your own. I'm leaving you guys. You guys got to figure this out. You guys wanted to break it." I asked Mike Rotundo mm-hmm. a long time ago when he was a producer for the company. I asked Mike. I said, "How do you do it with Bray and and uh, Bo?" Both. He was like, "Listen." He was like, "When they told me they wanted to get into business, I told him fine. I said that's okay." He says, "But understand this: you're gonna get, have to get yourself out of trouble and this and that and blah blah blah, and you you got to mind your p's and q's." He goes, "I'll help you, and I'll try to give you as much advice as I can, but I ain't holding your hand no more." And that's just the way it's got to be with my boys, you know. I'm not holding their hand, so I'm very proud of what they're doing over there. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be nice if they ever came and worked with me backstage, but I want them to, um, I want them to do their own thing. I don't want mm. them to really just have to do what Daddy says all the time. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> last question. Last, but, last ho- question. But hold on, if there was a if there was a Monday Night War in my house, they behinds would be going through a table. <laughs> 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 I guarantee you, you put that on the dirt, you put that out. You if this if this airs. And the dirt sheets get that. The dirt sheets be like, oh my God, Devon's abusive to his kids. Be kid. Man, my kids are 26 years old. They ain't kids. Oh, to put it back. They ain't 26. I mean, they, they, they are 26. I'm sorry. They ain't kids. Um, one last question, actually. And as you as you talk to your daughter and as we can hear her as mm-hmm. well, um, what would you do if one of your girls was to want to get into No, business? that's not happening. Nope. No, nope. I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm not even gonna entertain that. <laughs> nope. Oh man. Nope. And don't get me wrong, you know, like Rick, like um, Charlotte has done very well for herself. Mm-hmm. Natty has done very well for herself. You know, mm-hmm. all the women in WWE have done extremely well for themselves, and I love that. But I don't want to take that chance on my daughter's breaking into this business and even remotely getting stuck going the wrong way somewhere right, or right, having right, a right, reputation. Right. That ain't right, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'll do wow. twenty years. I'll do twenty years for life, real quick. <laughs> somebody put their hands on my daughter. I ain't playing that. I hear that. <laughs> listen, my boys. I told my boys before they got. It, I said, listen, y'all grown ass men now. Y'all do mm. what you want to do. If y'all want to get in this business, that's on you. I said, you're going to have to take people coming in your face and talking to you nasty. I can't fight your battles because then they're going to go, oh, all they're going to do is go get Devon. You mm-hmm. know, for their, daddy's going to fight their battles. You got to fight your own battles. So, but with my girls, that's a different story. I'm, I'll kill somebody with my girl. I'm, mm, nope. <laughs> nope. I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 no, um, let's, let's yeah. get away from this subject as quick what? as possible. Uh, <laughs> um, um, on that note, thank you so much for spending this amount of time with us, um, giving us your insights and um, educating us on everything wrestling and even you know your your, your life and stuff. Um, where can people find you? Um, where can we listen to your podcast? Yes, we are on Testify Devon on Instagram, mm. Testify Devon on uh, Twitter, and um, Devon Academy dot com for any information that you need concerning my school uh mm. it's in winter park florida literally three minutes away from the performance center and nice. you know we got we we're sending guys left and right after their training you know calling them, hey listen got somebody for you you know it's up to them to pass the test once they get up there but we mm. give them the necessary tools that you need we will nice. show you what to do and how to get there but it's up to you to perform and nice. that's what we that's what we tell people when they join the school. So that's one of the things that you can again the, the listeners can go if they want to go to my school, you can go all the information again on Devon Academy uh dot mm-hmm. com and that's D D O N, no slash, no hyphen, just D D O N Academy dot com and get all mm-hmm. the information you need on the wrestling school in Winter Park, Florida. Nice, nice, nice. And you still are you still doing your podcast as well? Still, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a show today at 4 p.m. 
4 p.m. Eastern nice. here in America. Um, oh, we're doing nice. a part. It's called Table Talk. And uh, if you go on my Instagram, mm-hmm. all the links. We're on YouTube. We're on. Um, God, you gotta forgive me. I'm so horrible with this. Um, all those platforms that you need to go on, we're on there. So, <laughs> plus any link that you want, you can go to devonacademy.com and get a link to all of the all shows day. that we do on there. Yeah, we'll put so, them all in the description for you so people can yeah, man, find them. Sure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, I got. I'm the real. I'm the real Heath Slater. I got kids, so. <laughs> <I'm gonna lie. laughs> Plus, yeah, yeah. Plus, I have um, I have the new Devon Dudley T-shirts that are on the website oh, nice. as well. Um, that are from the school and stuff like that, so they can go on oh, and nice. purchase it in the whole nine as well. And we got eight by tens and everything on there as well. So it's like mm. a regular shop, you know. Come on down and check nice. it out. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Um, yeah, man, that that is it, man. Thank you so much for spending so much time with us um, and doing you. it, man. It's it's been amazing, and we'll Thank yeah you. we'll let you know when it's all when it all goes out in a, in a few. Yeah, days. let me know. I'd be love to promote it, and I'm sure somebody will take something out of content and, and put in their own <laughs> words. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this for the record right now. I did <laughs> not say in any way, shape, or form that any wrestling company was prejudiced or racist or anything like that. So just so they know, so they get it straight. Never said anything about that. And I never said anything bad about Vince McMahon either. Don't try to go get me fired. I got kids. Just stop the bullshit. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you very much. Um, I hope the rest of your day is is amazing. And Thank you. Um, and we'll speak to you very, very soon. You got it, guys. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thank and you. hey, thank keep up the great much, work. Man. Keep up the great work that you guys are doing thank on Instagram. You. I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd I love to see more pictures of me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Black History Month, of course, it will be. <laughs> My man. Take care, guys. Yeah, thank man. Take you, care. Man. I'll be more than willing to do the show again if you guys ever need me. I had a lot of fun. Much appreciated. Thank you. Much appreciated. Much respect, guys. Thank you very much. All right.